Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Engaging Youth and Addressing the Achievement Gap. This is our first webinar as part of the Developing Young Leaders series in the Generator School Network's webinar series across over the year. Um, my name is Amanda Larson. I'm the Youth Initiatives Lead at NYLC, and I will be facilitating today's session along with Lana Peterson, um, NYLC's School Strategies Lead, and another member of our professional development team, Elizabeth Koenig, will be doing our technology support today. So, so we're going to briefly introduce what the achievement gap is or how NYLC approaches the achievement gap. And then we'll really dig into what that model looks like through NYLC's programs. So Lana, to share about the gap. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Um, and everybody, welcome. Um, so to start in defining the gap as we move forward, uh, we know that the achievement gap is one of the most pressing issues, um, not just only for teachers and students and parents in the United States, but actually globally. Um, the achievement gap in the U.S. has been called the greatest civil rights issue of our time. And the costs of the gap are tremendous, literally and figuratively. The achievement gap in the United States can be defined as the gap in academic achievement measured by, but not limited to, standardized test scores, high school graduation and dropout rates, and college completion rates between students of color and their white counterparts, as well as students from low income backgrounds and their middle to high income counterparts. So gaps in academic achievement also exist um, between different groups of students, such as boys and girls. But however, this uh, we really focus our work on the ethnic and racial and socioeconomic achievement gap that exists in the United States. Um, the achievement gap can also be viewed as an engagement gap or an empowerment gap or an opportunity gap. Um, and in order to eradicate this gap, students of all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic backgrounds must be empowered, they must be engaged, and have the opportunity to succeed. So, NYLT's Achievement Gap Initiative is called SMART, Youth Solutions to the Achievement Gap. It's about tackling the achievement gap head on by educating and inspiring and empowering the most important stakeholders of this problem. And we know that those stakeholders are the youth to take action and propose solution towards closing the gap. So these materials are informed by research and NYLC's more than 25 years of youth led work. Um, and they're meant to empower students to do what adults have not been able to accomplish which is transformative change in school districts and their communities across the country. So they're making this change one youth, one, stu one school, one community at a time. NYLC's Achievement Gap Initiative was actually a result of a 2007 decision um, by our Youth Advisory Council. They were disturbed by what they had learned about educational in inequalities in the United States. And these students decided to focus on NYLC's youth programming on addressing the issue. So. From 2008 to 2010, NYLC developed this youth-led response to the gap, and they implemented it during our National Youth Leadership Training, which is a gathering of young people and adult mentors who come from across the country for a week of service, simulation, outdoor leadership experiences, and cultural immersions. So um, as a result of that week, um, we did a lot of surveying of who attended um, NYLT, um, and I want to talk about the first result that we saw, which was just the core understanding of the issue. So when students first came to NYLT, um, before participating in the training, they took a survey, and most of the students said that they were not well informed or somewhat informed about the achievement gap. But the post-survey results um, were closer to well informed. Um, the second dot there, skills to address the problem. So the youth said that, um, they demonstrated the increase in skills at solving the achievement gap, um, that they felt that they probably could or definitely could do most of the skills associated with addressing the achievement gap, which includes um, creating a plan to address the problem, uh, getting others to care about the problem, organize and run a meeting, uh, express views in front of a large group of people, interpret test scores or data that shows a problem, among other. Um, so, the last dot there, where youth were asked to rate um, the extent to which NYLT and planning and implementing service learning action plan had influenced uh, several aspects of their personal development. Um, so more than 90% of the youth felt um, that the experience had a moderate or major impact in their development. 100% of the NYLT uh, uh, participants 
said that their experience had a moderate or major impact on their feeling that they could make a difference in the understanding of students different from themselves. So um, to talk about how we kick off SMART each year, I'm gonna talk about, start the conversation about na National Youth Leadership Training. So for more than 25 years, youth have come together at this training to work uh, to build those connections across races, ethnicities, gender, geographies, and socioeconomic backgrounds. So together at this camp, they participate in leadership seminars, uh, cultural events, and service projects, uh, while exploring issues related to the achievement gap, race relations, and ethics. But before they leave, um, the youth and their adult mentors work to develop a service learning action plan to address those educational disparities that they've identified in their own schools and local communities. So whatever makes the most sense for where they come from. The SMART trainings and the materials really grew out of those trainings. Um, they're designed to transfer aspects from that National Youth Leadership Training um, to outside of the camp setting to share those activities, the simulations, the resources with really a broader audience. So traditionally these trainings have occurred through this one week model, uh, but now NYLC is offering the same trainings in a half day, full day, or multi-day trainings on a contractual basis on the SMART materials. All right, so we're gonna dig a little bit more into what these trainings look like or what the content of it is um, to get a feel for what a SMART training looks like. So we've talked about it particularly in the context of the National Youth Leadership Training is, is where this stems from, the traditional model, but it also could be done in your home community with leadership team. So we'll kind of go back and forth between these two as examples. So for either one, either one, if you were doing it at what we call NYLT, that camp-like model that happens in, in July each year, or in your home community, it starts with teams of youth along with an adult mentor. So the, the team factor is really important so that there is um, some, some students to work together to help think about solutions, and an adult mentor who can not only attend the training, but who really will be there to support them throughout the year in that model, to really be a coach throughout the process and an advocate for their work. Um, so like I said, this is what happens at NYLT. They come from across the country. You can kind of see in the left-hand corner of our screen, we have a, a picture that will develop as we go throughout this webinar, but um, is just starting out now with separate groups coming from across the country in those teams. We see all sorts of different um, groups of youth attend these trainings. Sometimes there's groups from church groups or leadership and student council groups at a school. Um, it really can be across the board. Maybe there's several representatives from different grade, grade groups, so it's um, fun to see that you are already thinking about what that might look like in your own community. Keep those group of students in mind as, you, as we go through these trainings and, and how you might involve these students in this process. So taking that group of students in those teams and their adult mentors, they go through a process of understanding the SMART training, so really understanding what is the achievement gap? What does that look like, um, both on a national level and what does it mean on a personal level? Um, so it's, there is um, trainings that go through simulations, but there's also um, material. So a facilitator handbook and a student handbook um, that after going through the training that the participants can take with them as well to, to be planning as they go through. So this can either happen at NYLT, like you see in this picture, kind of a trainer of trainers model where then the students who attend NYLT go back and train their local leadership team so they're bringing even more into the more people into the conversation and more people into the planning or it starts right at this step um, where we where we would come straight into a school or straight into one of the groups that you're talking about with um, into a church group or into a youth advisory council and and start right there with the whole team getting involved and understanding what that looks like so then to break that down even a little further to, to be able to do this, what the SMART facilitator guides and the youth guides offer and what we do in the training is making sure to first establish a safe space. So in, in discussions, especially as emotionally charged as something around the achievement gap, it's really important to first make sure that there is um, a comfortable space in which to ask questions, in which to make mistakes. Um, and so we, we do this in every training. Even if it's a short one, we'll spend 10 minutes to really come up with those ground rules. Um, and oftentimes these are team building activities um, and exercises that get people a little bit out of their comfort zone, talking to some, some people that they maybe haven't talked to before and um, starting to build the place for that conversation to happen. 
after we do that, we then introduce the idea of inequities. And um, this is also done through several different kind of really interactive simulation activities. Um, so this is, this is important. It's designed to get um, participants to really understand the effects of socioeconomic, racial, and cultural inequities. Um, these, these activities help participants realize the privileges that may, they may have or may not have experienced in their life and um, really to get that historical perspective on these different large systematic things that impact the achievement gap in some way um, so that they're affecting our educa educational system in, a, in kind of a broader aspect which you might not always see. So we introduce that, um, but then we don't expect that participants or that youth will be um, planning their project around one of those larger issues. You know, it's important to have that historical perspective, um, but then we really focus in on four factors that influence the academic achievement gap. Um, and it's partly because it's not, um, it's discouraging to have for youth to be thinking about addressing systematic racism. You know, it's not something that you can see immediate results with. And this is looking at kind of the individual, both the individual factors, the teacher factors, the school system factors, and the home and family background areas that um, contribute to the achievement gap that are all interrelated. Um, you can see from, from the graph, like I said, that they are interrelated. So that if a school, for instance, has, is lacking resources, the teacher will also be lacking resources to um, create a space in, the, in their classroom. Um, but in the same way, if we are addressing one of the issues, if you are addressing one of the factors, it then conversely affects the other ones as well. So these are, this is how the SMART Guide is um, organized, is around each of, these, each of these four factors. And there's activities and simulations uh, based around each, of, each one of these that we're going to go into in a moment to share some ideas. All right, so to first talk about the individual uh, factors that address um, or that affect academic achievement. Um, so research has shown um, that students' attitudes towards academic success and committing to achieving academic success has a strong impact on their academic achievement. So this area of the SMART is really bulk, uh, bro broken into a series of activities um, that focus on what the youth's personal perspective is on success and really breaking that down and then being able to compare that to other students who are at the training and maybe what their different opinion is on success. Um, and then for them to really take ownership of achievement by creating a visual map of success and recognizing um, the support systems and the critical benchmarks that are in place um, that help them achieve as well too. So. Students have the opportunity to identify what they view as a, a successful life. You know, is it graduating from high school? Is it going to college? Is it being popular or know to, knowing your native language? Um, and so once that idea of success is explored, they develop that visual map um, and, then, and then really kind of develop their path that they have for the next couple of years that they view as success. So that's one way that we focus on the individual factors um, related to the achievement gap. Uh, the next is home and family backgrounds. So students' family backgrounds and the circumstances often affect or influence their levels of academic achievement. So the SMART materials um, really, the, one of the most dynamic um, experiences in the SMART is instructions on how to conduct a social studies test. Um, it's a simulation. It provides uh, participants the opportunity to really experience what it's like to have a language barrier um, and how that affects academic achievement. So in this simulation, um, along with an ensuing discussion, uh, it has students examine and understand how language might contribute to the achievement gap, um, including parental involvement, books, reading, and language in the home. And so how cultural and social capital of parents and the family plays into academic achievement. So while focusing in on how one family circumstance, circumstance affects this, uh, the reflection questions really allow students to translate their feelings from this simulation into a broader understanding of how their own home and their family backgrounds affect their success level in school and how they might be the same or different from their peers across the country. So next on to the teacher factors. Um, 
several of the factors um, related to achievement fall within the sphere of teacher. So a teacher's style, as well as their level of trust and respect um, that teachers and students have for one another can affect how well a student does in school. So in this section of the SMART, the students explore um, the qualities of teaching styles that they find most engaging. So then they recognize um, poor student-teacher relations in their school, um, that they can help create a positive dialogue between teachers and students and administrators about potential improvements. So this may include um, the school and teachers promoting teaching styles that motivate students to succeed. Um, students must also recognize the role that they have and they can play in helping to improve student-teacher relations. Um, a level of responsibility rests on the, on the shoulders of the students as they promote positive student-teacher relations and engaging teaching styles. So research also emphasizes that high expectations are critical um, for ensuring that students' academic achievement. Um, within the teacher and academic achievement section of the SMART, students are asked to consider the importance of expectations um, that teacher hold for students as well as the importance of expectations students hold for themselves. And you'll see through all these examples or all these different factors that there's a potential for many different projects that develop out of this. We'll share a couple examples at the, at the end here in a bit. Um, and one of them you'll see specifically focuses on this teacher factor. And then the last factor um, that I'm going to talk about today is a school-based factor um, and how that contributes to the achievement gap. And so um, the simulation from this training in this section of the SMART uh, provides participants with an opportunity to really experience how academic tracking and disparity in school resources affect students. So in this exercise, participants are administered a short timed math test. And during that test, half the students are given additional resources to help them succeed, um, calculators and formulas and conversion guides. Um, but once the first test is up, participants are given another test. And of course, in order to do good in the second test, they have to do proficient on the first test. Um, so after the participants have completed both tests, the facilitator leads a reflection ses session based um, on the participants' experiences during the simulation and the role that academic tracking and the school resources can play in acad academic achievement. And I think you'll find throughout all of the simulations, you see how much these four factors are really interdependent and can really shake and move each other, so. Mm -hmm. All right, so you'll see this, this picture is growing on the left-hand side here. So all, all the way on the left-hand side, we had our youth and adult teams come together. They were went through this series of trainings of um, experiencing inequities, of learning about the four different factors and experiencing many different simulations that way. Um, they've either brought in a home leadership team at this point by training them or it's started right there. And now we're really to the point of starting to take action. So what, is this, what does this look like um, in the local community and how do you um, start to do something about these, the situation that you've learned, that the students have learned about? Um, so this is really taking it to a more local level. From, from the get-go, students are able to dig in in a research. So the service learning action plan really guides students to look at their own school demographics, to look at the adequate yearly progress summaries um, in their communities, and to look at the standardized test scores across the, the nation and in their own state, um, and to look at graduation rates. So it's really kind of pointing to, to the different tests and things to look at that help understand what that looks like on a local level to really understand um, what are the needs of that school or that community. Um, it also has resources and guides to create maybe a, a survey for students or teachers or staff to fill out together. So it has um, a guide of different things to think about in that way. Um, it helps think about a resource map. So what are the resources that you have or need that you can start tapping into or that you can start to um, connect with to help make the, the plan move forward and really thinking through all of all stages of that plan together. So this is, this is all materials that is included in that SMART um, facilitator guide and student handbook. So these projects are in action and then we'll get to this final picture where now you have those same, same groups of teams from across the nation or in that local community who are then doing um, service learning projects addressing the achievement gap all, all across the nation. But they're looking very different. So we, we approach it as this big systemic issue and, and talk about it from that big framework in many ways, but then 
but then students get to the point where they're able to look at it on a local level and think about how it impacts them personally and the peers that they go to school with and are surrounded by in the community. Um, so there's all these there's all these different project examples. Um, I'm going to pass it to Lana here to share three of those examples, and you'll see that it can again look very different depending on on the community group that takes it on and what needs that they see in their own community. All right, starting with uh, Kelvin Park High School in Chicago. Um, these students really focus in on that relationship between the students and the staff at the school. And so um, they developed a youth council that really uh, focused on improving the relationships among students and their teachers um, by facilitating conversations and team building activities um, amongst the groups of students and groups of teach teachers. And they really found that mutual trust and respect has increased since they started um, these actions and doing that. So we're really excited for them and we're hoping that they continue on with their project as well. Um, the next project that we have are fr is from Riverdale High School, which is in Portland, Oregon. Um, so a senior designed a service learning curriculum for a high school class that addresses the question, what is good education? Students explore the history of education, um, relevant education policy. Um, they compare their high school's adequate yearly progress uh, reports to other schools in the Portland metro area. Um, they shadow teachers at various schools. They research an aspect of the achievement gap and then they tutor local elementary school students. So through this combination of research and service and hands-on learning, they complete this semester by creating their own definition of what what they think schools should provide to offer effective education, um, really analyzing the factors that are involved and sharing reflections um, with the broader community as well. So, um, And lastly, we have one that's real close to home for us um, through Minneapolis Community Ed. Um, so a senior at Minneapolis uh, sought to increase awareness about the achievement gap amongst her peers, um, recognizing that many youth uh, lack not only the awareness of the issue, but really the terminology to be able to discuss the problem. So she joined a youth editorial board of Shine On, which is a district uh, service learning newspaper and helped the editorial board really focus in on that achievement gap. Um, so in its winter 2011 issue, uh, which you can see the front page of right there, um, the board collected and edited and published narratives, articles, poetry, and art submissions from elementary through high school students across the district and then the teachers used it in student-led publication as a, as a teaching resource and teaching about the achievement gap as well. Um, we've, we've shared a, a lot of information here specifically about how NYLC approaches the achievement gap and it's really about getting youth involved as stakeholders in, in addressing the issue and proposing solutions. And so it's all about training them to understand what that looks like, the factors that are part of it, um, and then looking at their own local community, how they can begin to address it and, and providing tools to do that. Um, currently, the smart, the smart materials cannot be purchased on their own. It's, it's going through the training first, and then with the training, you get those materials as part of it as the follow-up. So um, we'll, towards the end here, we'll give um, contact information and where to go for more information if you're interested in, in going that far. Um, great, I see a question came in asking about the cost. Um, you can find specific costs on our on our website at nylc.org backslash smart, um, but a couple different prices, and I don't know if I can quote it directly, um, but the National Youth Leadership Training, that week-long program model, um, tends to vary every year, but it's usually not more than $500 for a week-long training for high school students, um, and then a smaller price for the adult mentor training that is kind of a, a, a portion of that, a, a few days of it, um, which is not the cost of the camp in reality. It actually costs a lot more than that to send each individual to, N to NYLT, um, but NYLC helped offset that cost. So that's the, the full week-long model. Um, we also do half-day trainings, full-day trainings, and multi-day trainings. And um, if I'm remembering right, I think a half-day training is around $900. A full-day training is around $1,500. And... Um, multi-day would be you know dep that same day price but um, depending on how many days that you're doing it. There's lots of factors such as um, travel and the amount of participants as well so 
um, you know, we have our base range and then we kind of have to uh, figure out from where you are and how many people you have from there. So, um, another question came in, how do students get invited to the NYLC week long training? Um, you are invited and students are invited. Now we are in the process of securing those dates and locations. Um, but we, open that up to anyone to apply. So usually in the beginning um, beginning of the new year, we'll have information available on our website. Um, again, nylt.org, that one's backslash nylt. Um, and there's usually a pre-application. Um, so it's a group application because we encourage teams and adults to, um, to come together as a team. Um, so it's a pre-application, sharing your interests, the, the students that you're interested in bringing and what, and just kind of to share that you are interested in doing a full year project addressing the achievement gap afterwards. Um, so yeah, all in grade 10, we say it's for students entering grades nine through 12. And um, we really, if, if it's a good fit, we would like groups to be there, you know? So it's, it's oftentimes a matter of saying, okay, we have 30 groups that applied and each group can bring two people or each group can bring three people you know, depending on the overall number, so. And we encourage you to get those, I mean, even though we don't have the exact dates, get it on your schedule now. I know that a lot of districts, you really need to plan ahead um, as far as traveling and getting that on your schedule. And so um, if you even think that you could possibly send a youth, make sure that we start planning now. Um, we'll worry about signing up later, but we just wanna make sure that everybody um, takes whatever steps that they need to take in advance so that they can make sure that the youth and the mentors get to be a part of this really life-changing week. So, mm -hmm. And Brenda, we love your idea of having one in North Carolina. Um, we, we are hoping to continue to expand this model. It's, it's one that NYLC has been doing longer than NYLC has actually been a nonprofit organization, um, and it is, it is a really effective um, program. We, as Lana says, we we see or we hear a lot of people say that it was life-changing and they say that 5, 10, 15 years afterwards um, and now the focus of the achievement gap I think has only really expanded that the ability of that impact so we're we're hoping to continue expanding it and to see how to reach more people with it so it's exciting to see the interest of going to different states. Um, um, so if not now, feel free to contact us afterwards as well. My name is Amanda Larson. I'm the Youth Initiatives Lead again at NYLC. My email is up there. My phone number is up there. You can always find me on NYLC's website as well. Um, and then if you're interested in training, you can just go straight ahead and, and email training at nylc.org to specifically ask about costs or dates and start that conversation going. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. There's lots of ways to find information on NYLC. And Yes, this webinar is recorded and will be, be available on the Generator School Network under the Learn section um, with a topic called Achievement Gap or Engaging Youth in the Achievement Gap. If you aren't al already a member of the Generator School Network, membership to that is free as well. It's gsn.nylc.org and Elizabeth is sending that through the chat box right now. Um, it's a community of online educators who are passionate about service learning and who are connecting to to learn more and grow in their own practice. So um, this is, that is where you can find this recorded webinar in a few days once we get everything edited and ready to go. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Bye. Bye.